Hi, I'm James. This is a new segment that I'm doing while I'm out on the trails. I spend a lot of time out here. It's a place I go where I can uh, kind of work through all this stuff in my life and my brain and find a path to wisdom. I call it for myself, wisdom from the trail. It's where I go to find it. And today, just want to talk about um, what's more important, emotional intelligence or IQ intellectual intelligence seems like an any easy answer it should be something that you could be able to just say yeah this is what it is and frankly for me i got a distinct leaning one way but let me explain it i will say emotional intelligence is more important and there's a number of reasons why but first of all let's talk about intellectual intelligence e- iq versus eq right iq your capacity to understand intellectually what's going on, to do the you know, hard tasks, what do we call hard skills, right? Have those skills. It's very important for a workspace to be able to perform at a high level. If you wanna be able to move up the ladder in your work environment, your intelligence is important. How well you can draft an email, how well you can analyze data, how well you can be critically thinking, all those things. They play a huge role in your capacity to perform. But what they've found over years of research of leaders who lose their jobs, close to 89% of all leaders who lose their jobs do so because of their lack of soft skills. That's their leadership capability. And that comes from emotional intelligence. Simon Sinek wrote a book called Leaders Eat Last. And in that he discusses the importance of emotional intelligence on Navy SEALs teams. I love to look at places like this where performance is a life and death situation because all the political noise, all of the issues of the day that everyone's fighting for and clamoring to be heard disappear when life and death are on the line. You just want the very best. And what Simon Sinek points out is the Navy SEALs, when they are actually on the path to becoming a Navy SEAL, their biggest, most important part of determining whether someone can be qualified is not their performance. It is their capacity to perform well as a teammate. Can you adapt? Can you allow someone else to take charge when they're better equipped? Can you recognize that you are not the best equipped in this situation and defer to another? This takes a complete lack of ego. It takes seeing through the task at hand and finding a way to achieve regardless of your part in it. Sadly, what we find in the workspace in the world of business particularly, incentives around production are really the most focused on indicator of success for who we advance in the workspace. I remember one time particularly working at a company with this young kid who wasn't very good at sales. I mean, he was decent, but he wasn't your top sales guy. Had a great work ethic, got along with everybody, but he wasn't a vicious closer. And the sales manager, over the whole company, didn't want to promote him because the sales weren't great. But the guy he promoted was a fucking asshole. He could close a deal no matter how the person was reacting in front of him. He had no empathy. He just had the capacity to find money. And that guy leading a team destroyed the morale of a team. And that is the typical scenario that most companies face when they are looking at who to promote who's our best performer. But when you look in performance from a myopic scope of earnings in the moment versus leadership, you can really fail. And most companies do. They are looking at the performance, the intelligence of this person and failing to recognize the impact of emotional intelligence on the performance of everyone around them. I'm finding it hard to talk to you and climb this trail, (laughs) I had to take a pause. Let's go back to Simon Sinek, right? His story about the Navy SEALs. 
So what they do is they analyze all those people that are in the running on their performance and on their capacity to work as a team, teammate, get along with others. And the most important category for them is the teammate. And so if they have somebody that's an extremely high performer, top of the class, best athlete, best shooter, whatever, however they analyze that, right? What they do is then they look at how they interact with the team. And a guy that could be number one in the class in performance, if he is at the bottom of the scale in how he gets along with others, he'll never make it as a Navy SEAL. He's a detriment. He's someone you cannot rely on. He's in it for himself. He's looking strictly at the outcome and what he can bring. The key that they've determined that makes a leader great of all the attributes, and this is something that has been analyzed for years. There's all sorts of criteria, but the number one key indicator that tells you you can be a leader is your ability to feel compassion, empathy for others. That allows you then to make choices that don't reflect solely on your personal benefit, but for the group as a whole. And what they've discovered is that companies that promote people with high emotional intelligence, that are good leaders, that have empathy, they create a roof of safety over their people. They take responsibility for everything that happens. They are not looking for blame. They are not looking to tear you down if you make a mistake. They are simply looking to accomplish the task at hand with the people they have been given. And they will do that in any way they can with those people in play, relying on their talents, relying on their expertise, interested and engaged in how the nuances of performance can be improved by those around them rather than solely relying on their own capacity. So you can see how when you're working in the company, emotional intelligence becomes extremely important. And the numbers prove this. In fact, people that want to be chasing emotional intelligence often get discouraged. They feel like it doesn't work. You can't make these changes because when you switch to a space where you're relying on others and expecting them to perform, it often takes them off guard. They don't know fully their expectations. They don't know the landscape and how to move. And so initially the performance of a team that is relying heavily on a good leader in teamwork will perform lower than the one that has a narcissistic asshole running the show with a whip and keeping everyone in line. That team out of the gates will light it up. They will perform. But over the long term, those companies, they fall because you have high turnover. You have low employee engagement. You have huge demands on the leaders in terms of stress because they're whipping people as hard as they can to produce and solely relying on their own intellect to drive that. Versus the other way, this team learns to trust each other. They learn to develop the understanding of each other's skills, each other's weaknesses, and they know how to cover for each other because when there's a mistake, nobody's casting blame. They're simply looking at what happened. Why did we fail? They're not interested in an individual failure so much as how that individual maybe got to that place through the process that they're working and how can we fix it so it doesn't happen again. Think of the safety that creates. Think of how creative people under that sort of leadership can become. They don't have to worry about a fall. They don't have to worry about a slip up. They just have to worry about eventually getting to the final goal. And they have all kinds of ways of doing it. So that is why when I say to me, it's a very, very clear, clear winner of who, what is better, emotional intelligence or intellectual intelligence. EQ wins, EQ wins hands down. I'll take a mediocre performer in the level of performance that is required, right? It doesn't have to be the top. You have to perform to a certain standard. But once you've hit a basic standard, well, there's lots of nuance within that. And you really want somebody with a high emotional intelligence that knows how to get along with others, knows how to inspire them, knows how to drive them through intrinsic motivation, not a whip. That's when you get a team. So emotional intelligence is my choice. If you want to pick something to develop, that's the thing to do. And honestly, I have several methods of doing it. First of all, 
you use meditation. Meditation is super important. Second of all, I have an app that I use. It's incredible. I've meditated for years, and in the course of three months, my emotional intelligence rose exponentially in relative to my years of meditation. I could not believe how quickly I was able to begin to identify the emotions I was feeling, move through them, and act in a better way from the knowledge that I got from this app. The app's called Vibonics, and you can download it if you go to my website, jamesgburnham.com. It's a really cool app. 15 seconds a day, and you can increase your emotional intelligence in three months to a level you never thought. That's how I do it. Emotional intelligence is the way to go. If you like this video, stick around. I got another one coming up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. I'd love, or comment. I'd love to hear from you. I'm James Burnham. Thanks for joining me on the trail.